Blend modes. They can be a real pain in the ass, and they just never seem to do what you'd expect. I struggled with understanding blend modes all up until recently. I used to think blend modes had the same use case as shaders. I basically thought they were shaders light. However, they're nothing alike. Also, blend modes have one huge advantage. They have access to the color and the alpha of the pixel you want to draw to. Now, this may of course be obvious to some of you. It's in the name, I hear you scream. But what is BM add? BM subtract? What does it mean to subtract a color? It wasn't until I saw this equation that it clicked for me. A blend mode isn't a blend mode at all. It's a combination of two blend factors. So let's analyze this equation a bit. The first part, R as G as B as A as, is the color and alpha values of the pixel you're trying to draw. This is basically the output that comes directly from the shader, so this means that the blending is performed after the shader has done its part. This color is called the source, and is, in the demo on the screen, represented by the crate. The other color in the equation is the color of the pixel that's already on the screen. This is the color that will be replaced by the final pixel color. This color is called the destination, and is represented by the brick wall. They are each multiplied with a factor, and this factor is what we have control over. Additive blending is when the destination factor is set to 1, and the source factor is set to the alpha of the source. The result is the two colors added together, and will as such be brighter than either of them. Regular alpha blending is done when the factor of the destination is reduced as the factor for the source increases. You do, however, not have control over these factors directly. There is no function to set source factor to 0.5. What you can control is which value is used for the factor, and for this we have the following 11 options. And this is why blend modes are so powerful, because you can use any combination of these for the source and destination factors. Notice how you, for example, can plug the source color into the source factor, effectively multiplying the color by itself. Regular alpha blending uses the alpha of the source for the source factor and 1 minus the alpha of the source for the destination. And from this point on, I don't want you to think of blend modes as some kind of dark magic. I want you to think of this equation and how you can manipulate it for the result you need. So, let's forget the regular GPU set blend mode and let's work exclusively with the extended version. No, not that one. This one. This function is the extended extended blend mode function, which gives you a separate control over how the alpha channel is blended. Remember how the regular blending used the source alpha for smoothly interpolating between the source and destination? Well, what about the destination alpha? This value is actually not used for anything by default, it's just there. But we can make use of it. You can think of the destination alpha as a secret variable that is not shown, but you can write to it and read from it when you need. And that brings me to the topic for today's video, shadows. There are many ways to do shadows in 3D games, ranging from baked light maps to real-time shadow maps, stencil buffers and ray tracing. I'm a fan of the good old circle beneath the player. However, what many people do is to create a circular sprite and draw that beneath the player. This can work okay when the ground is perfectly flat, but fails as soon as the ground is curved. So in today's video I will show you a really clever trick using blend modes for drawing a circular shadow that adapts to the ground beneath the player. As always, I start by downloading the source from the previous video, and I'll do some preparation before I start explaining. Okay, so now I have removed the player's regular drawing, and I am drawing a cylinder instead. This cylinder is what's soon going to be the player's new shadow. I then create a new shader for drawing the cylinder. This shader is going to be extremely bare bones and all it'll really do is draw with the color that I send it through a uniform. For now I'll set the color to black with an alpha of 1 and I'll see that it still works. Notice how changing the scaling along one of the dimensions reverses the draw order, making the back face culling remove the other side. It doesn't look like much right now, but it will soon, I promise. My goal now is to quote unquote subtract the inverted cylinder from the correctly drawn cylinder, hopefully ending up with just a dark circle beneath the player.
The way I plan to do this is by making use of the hidden destination alpha value that I mentioned earlier. I set the factor for the source color to 0, since I don't want the first cylinder I draw to be visible. I set the factor for the source alpha to be 1 to make sure that I'm only drawing to the hidden destination alpha. Also, whenever you're messing with blend modes, remember to reset the blend mode to be a normal, otherwise everything stops working. Now, the cylinder below the player is not visible, but it's still drawing to the hidden destination alpha. The next thing I will do is draw the cylinder again, this time with the reverse draw order so that the outside is drawn this time. I will change the blend mode so that it multiplies the source color with the destination alpha. Assuming the whole surface had an alpha of 1 before drawing the first cylinder, only the area covered by the inverted cylinder will have an alpha of 0. I used the wrong values on my first attempt, but this only shows how important it is to just mess around with it and see what works. And there we go, we have successfully used the hidden destination alpha channel to cut away parts of a cylinder, effectively ending up with a circle that adapts to the shape of the ground. However, the circle is completely black. I would prefer it to be partially transparent, so that's what I'll do next. I set the alpha of the first cylinder to 1 minus the shadow alpha, since an alpha of 1 represents the areas that are not covered by the cylinder. And then I just test a bunch of different combinations. Now we're talking. This is exactly what it should look like, except with the shadow drawing onto the player as well, but that's easily fixed by just turning off Z-Writing and drawing the shadow before drawing the player. I'm using a cylinder, but if you'd prefer the shadow getting smaller the further away the player is from the ground, you can just as easily use a cone. That's it for this video, thanks a lot for watching. I always appreciate a comment, a like, a subscription or any kind of feedback. Keep checking back for more videos. Snitter out.